a nationwide test set to begin any moment. Don't be alarmed, it is just a test. Oh. In a couple of moments, I will disappear. And you will see this test, and then we'll be back. It's so much fun. About 30 seconds later, and we'll carry on with the broadcast. And radio got cut off. This is what's important. Making sure the feds can take over your local radio station without your control. Every station at once. Every point of the dial. Cable. Broadcast TV. FM. AM. Shortwave. This is a test of the emergency alert system. The message you are hearing is part of the nationwide live code test The Empire needs to let you know what's going on when you're watching a cooking show. They similar tests on your local stations. This will look and sound like those tests. The latest one will be conducted in the event of an actual emergency and it's meant to provide information in a national crisis, so they're rolling out this national alert system. Remember, you cannot avoid it by flipping the channel. It's everywhere. You cannot avoid it when you go to Walmart. There's a Janet Napolitano going in at hundreds of their locations telling you to trust no one but government at the checkout line and on jumbotrons and at Central Park and Times Square, and in Las Vegas, and at Mall of America, and, oh, I'll give you the rest of the story here in a moment. It's going to be on your cell phones, your Xboxes, your Connects, everything. You will get the Big Brother message, whether you like it or not. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's InfoWars Nightly News, and it is the ninth day of 2011 on this live Wednesday edition. Thank you for joining us. And a lot of you are saying, well, I get my news from the internet. So what if they take over UHF, VHF TV? So what if they take over cable? You know, so what? That's all dinosaur dying media. It doesn't matter if you don't want to watch the info, babe, telling you it's no big deal to have the first test of this type. Because you think, and I thought, you'd just run to the internet to get away from these people. But no, they're coming out and saying, and they're already testing, Thanks forced so text to your phone, videos. We reported on it last year in police state for the rise of FEMA. And now the Washington Post has come out today and said, yes, they're now going to move into the next phase, breaking in on your cell phone breaking in on your Xbox that's connected to the internet, breaking in. And they sell it in the Washington Post like, gee, when are we going to get one of those uh, nice authoritarian central government takeover systems? And they say, don't worry. Uh, th they've been testing a system, and it's going to be coming out soon. If you feel left out because you're on the internet, if you feel left out when you're playing your video games, if you feel left out, we're going to forcibly call your landline. We're going to break in over your phone call and take over with a Barack Obama video. But here's the good news. People are seeing through this dangerous, out-of-control federal power grab. They're seeing through it. And a lot of talk show hosts, myself included, talked about this in the last few weeks. We've been talking about it really first since the late 19. 90s when engineers warned me uh, about the situation and the people are saying no to this because uh, the feds six months ago announced and we covered it in a federal press release that Obama was going to address the public on the new system and how they were going to be taking over our cell phones and all other systems for 30 minutes and then it was going to be 10 and then five and then one minute message from Obama and then they thought better of it, these power grabbers that have the TSA groping your wife and sticking their hands down your pants and now running checkpoints on the highways. These power grabbers putting up light poles with microphones listening to you and your family and admittedly doing it. They thought better. They said having the gracious leader cut in over the televisions and make announcements on the radio and TV, that might wake people up. Now you're saying, hey, I've heard the duck farts before. That's what engineers call the brank, brank, brank. What's different? Well, in the 50s, they set it up for continuity of government. 
where a local station would get government transmissions during emergencies in big cities, and then other stations would voluntarily get the word and tune to that government announcement. Then in the mid-90s, they said, you got to put this equipment in that can take over your system. And now they're announcing, hey, we're going to take everything over. And really what it is, is the internet or total media telecommunications kill switch. In fact, we have a graphic that basically breaks that down. It's a total media takeover system. And I learned this from the engineers. I learned this from the researchers. Uh, in fact, they even told me back in 99 that I could cover this. The engineer did at 98.9. And then it turned out to be a big freak out at the radio station and the FCC threatened them. They didn't want the public to know what's going on then. Now they're ready for it. Just like the highway checkpoints I saw in federal documents where they want to have federal police running checkpoints. They didn't want that out when I first covered it. Now they're telling you it's happening. Everything that dictatorships have, we're now getting here in the United States. And I noticed, and I talked to a Dallas engineer about this, but we were able to check Dallas stations, we're south of Dallas, that they, they sent the tones to take over the station, but nothing was transmitted over it. Here in Austin, we got it, but it was garbled. So that's what the EAS is, is all part of this total media kill switch. And now they're saying during emergencies, the feds may just redirect uh, the entire internet into government websites with government messages. And of course, this allows one unified brainwashing message to be sent out and is not what a free society has. All the studies and common sense shows with people with cell phone cameras and local radio stations and diverse reporters, that that's what's going to get you the best coverage. Mainstream media most of the time now reports off bloggers on the ground and people with their cell phones uploading videos and Twitter. So this is a way to shut all that down if the government wants to bring in martial law or wants to put out one official story, especially if the government's uh, basically uh, trying to suppress the states. We talk about insurrection of the states and bringing in martial law and the John Warner Defense Authorization Act. And that's what this is all about. The federal government is bought and paid for by foreign banks that are illegitimate and that have occupied our country. This is a foreign occupying army. But they're not wearing a foreign uniform. They don't look different. So we accept it. But that's what this is. That's an important understanding there. This is a financial takeover backed up by paramilitary force using the excuse of Muslim terrorists. But when you get into the training and the secret manuals, none of it deals with foreign terrorists, real or not, real or imagined, real or manufactured. It's all about people that know about the Federal Reserve and about the occupational government. We live in an occupied country. They occupy our minds with brainwashing. They occupy our monetary system with the Federal Reserve. It's now to wake up. It's now time to wake up to that and understand what's happening. Okay, so uh, here's reports, uh, CBS News. Glitches reported during FEMA's first ever national emergency alert system test. And again, it's the first ever because before you got the little messages and then you tuned to it, they put the takeover system in in 96, but they still let the stations uh, get the order and then do it themselves. Now, they don't care. And I've noticed in the last six months a huge buildup. They're making sure everybody's going to do what they're told. And they were going to broadcast the fearless leader, Kim Jong Obama. I meant Adolf Obama. Or, that's, but those guys are actual dictator, evil people. Obama's just a puppet of the banking dictatorship. All right, I'm done ranting uh, about um, that piece of information. Let's now shift gears to real crises. Unending tens of billions are spent every year on microphones and cameras and face scanning systems tracking the U.S. citizens, harassing U.S. citizens. But meanwhile, there have been 60,000 deaths. I kept saying 40,000 the last three years. I've been corrected. Mexican TV and government says 60,000 in Mexico, mostly along the border with the U.S. Inside, it's around four to 5,000 deaths total. This is all kept very quiet. And as you know, I was down in South Texas, very nearby, uh, where this new uh, crisis took place. Uh, and I talked to the locals, and it was in the paper that Mexican helicopters, military helicopters, are deep inside the United States now, authorized to 
engaged narcotics traffickers, whoever that is, as if the Mexican military isn't involved in drug dealing, so is our so-called military. Point is, these militaries really work for the big mega banks. Well, in this latest article out of the Monitor uh, newspaper, which is the big regional paper down there, uh, serving uh, multiple cities, they talk to the witnesses and they go, oh yeah, it, it, it looked like they were on our side of the border and the Mexican helicopter was shooting somebody and then an ambulance went and picked him up. It looked like he was in bad shape. So this should be a big national story. Instead, it's regional. It's only in South Texas that this is even known that it is the equivalent of the Vietnam War. In fact, more people die a year than the Vietnam War and the government is doing nothing. When they do put a few troops up down there for a photo op, they're not allowed to stop smugglers or people crossing the border. I mean, this is incredible. And the Mexican government would never put up with U.S. military coming down there. There's some talk by Rick Perry of it happening now. No sovereign country puts up with another country's military coming in. But under anti-terrorism agreements, you can look this up, we will use Canadian and Mexican or other partners in the fight against terrorists, be they domestic or international, inside the U.S., you can pull up FEMA NLE09. Just type in FEMA NLE09, and it'll show you where they had 14 countries in the U.S. a few years ago trying to take on the American people. In fact, there it is, NLE09, and uh, you can pull that up uh, for yourself. Uh, to type in NLE09 FEMA and maybe it'll come up because you're actually on the FEMA site. I talked about it so much, they may have taken it down, uh, but um, usually it was the top link. What on earth? Oh, you're searching inside FEMA. It's like a Google search engine. Look, uh, j j just search Google itself and type in NLE09 FEMA press release or NLE09 by itself and uh, you'll... Uh, You'll, you'll get the press release uh, where they, uh, the, there's InfoWars, it, it, it should have a link. Yeah, there it is, there it is, InfoWars.com, then you open it, and voila, FEMA administrator meets with governors to discuss some er emergency preparedness. And then you read deeper into this press release and others, it talks about the foreign troops. Okay, so SWAT teams dispatched as gun battle unfolds near the town down there. Let's continue. What is the response of Eric Holder? Now, remember, he's been caught perjuring himself. We played the clips. He gave press conferences admitting two years ago they were running this operation. Then he said, like Sergeant Schultz, I know nothing. I know nothing. Same thing with uh, Mr. Napolitano. I mean, uh, Miss Napolitano, the uh, Frankenstein creature or troll or whatever she is. I don't normally call names, but she said, I'm mad at the Drudge Report and the people he links to calling me a troll. We never called you a troll, but if the, if the name fits, a troll by any other name is still a troll. A jack-booted, un-American hater of liberty that we shouldn't all be groveling and scared of. We actually had a radio station call us, two of them today, but one of them was, should you be talking about the government on these EAS? We're worried. I, I thought I was an American. I thought I was a man, not a mouse. I mean, I... I don't know, I guess I should just be scared of her. Sure, they can set me up, probably will. Whatever, somebody's gotta stand up to these people. I've had enough of it. You ever been fed up? You ever had enough crap? I mean, that doesn't look like some kind of demonic ferret. I don't know what does. Okay, giant overgrown ferret. I don't know. I mean, I talk, call myself Pumpkinhead. I mean, if the name fits, and we got a ferret over here. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna get to this new news, is why I'm so angry. Even after they get caught shipping the guns in directly, not just letting them leave gun stores and lying about it and shipping cocaine back in, that's in federal court and admitted we've covered it probably 10 times here in the last few months. A, the mainstream media will cover it in a few papers, but it never becomes the big national story. Instead, it's, you know, did Herman Cain grab somebody's booty all day long, obsessing on this. Uh, but U.S. losing battle to stem flow of illegal guns into Mexico, Attorney General. We're losing the battle. This was always meant to be blamed on the Second Amendment. And even after they've been caught, what do they say in the quote under it? Attorney General Eric Holder tells Senate hearing that Congress is partly to blame because of its hostility to gun control. Mexico has a total gun ban. Now give me a document cam shot. I'll show people here. It's the sub headline that says it. I mean, we even have the video clip. We should play it tomorrow. 
There is a total gun ban in Mexico. The citizens can't defend themselves from the corrupt government and the thugs. The answer is arm the entire Mexican population. That's a good start for them, you see. So, so they can protect themselves. But no, they have a criminal government. Of course they can't arm themselves, like the criminal government of Chicago or New York. Anywhere you have criminals, they want their slaves disarmed. Could black people own guns as slaves? Hell no. Could slaves in Rome own guns? Hell no. Hell no. And it's wrong. Free men own firearms and weapons. And so he, wants, he says, give us gun control. That's why this happened. No, you ship guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment because you knew that 90 plus percent of them were the Mexican military and smugglers shipping in military weapons from the U.S. and, 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 and Germany. And some of us thought, oh, the military must be selling them out the back. No, it turns out this was all directed. That was directed as well to get them all killing each other down there to destabilize things so they could then absorb Mexico in the North American Union. But because that didn't work, you just shipped them directly in there to blame it on American gun owners. Criminals. They are. They are criminals, and they should go to jail. And I tell you, not everybody's cowards. I go all over talk radio now and here for especially the attorney general to go to jail and the, 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 the uh, demonic ferret. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and cover the honey story now, and then we'll go back to the other stuff in order. We'll get into the Ron Paul stuff. Since I saw you do a screenshot of that, let's just cover the honey now. Shock finding, more than 75% of all honey sold in grocery stores contains no honey at all. You know, so many times I've asked my uncle, who for a decade worked in real hill country, Texas, beekeeping. And uh, he got out of it because he got tired of getting stung by bees and he could make more money in ranch management. Uh, but he would explain to me how angry he would get and uh, how a lot of the even local companies, but especially the big internationals, have no honey in them. And, 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 and how they would get away with it. He worked for Fane's Honey and it was 100% honey. Their molasses and other stuff they sold was 100%. I mean, you know, they would go to Louisiana and buy the big barrels of the, of, of the raw stuff and purify it. And, and Fane's is in stores in Austin. It's real honey. Every once in a while, you might find a little, you know, bug leg or something in there. But he would explain this to me. But now Natural News, uh, through uh, the food safety uh, groups, well, it's all broken down here. In the laboratory at the Texas A&M University, evaluated more than 60 products labeled as honey that had been purchased by uh, FSN from 10 states in the District of Columbia. They found 76% of honey samples purchased from major grocery store chains like Kroger and Safeway, and 77% from samples purchased from big box chains like Sam's Club and Walmart did not contain any pollen. That is impossible. Okay, it's in all of it. Under a microscope, it means it's 100%. It's microscopic. It's in all of it. Even worse, the honey samples taken from drugstores like Walgreens and CVS and fast food restaurants like McDonald's and KFC were 100% of which were found to contain no traces of pollen. And it means uh, pollenless is 100% means that it's, it's not. And they went through and tested it and found it was corn syrup. And that's what my uncle would say. He said they put a flavoring in there. My God, it's corn syrup. And then he won't come on the air and tell the story because he doesn't want to be on TV. But you know what? I'm done. He doesn't have to put his face up here tomorrow. I want him on the news. And then let's also get this writer uh, from Natural News, Ethan A. Huff. I've never had him on. Or we can get the other groups they're reporting on, food safety news. We can get them on. Yeah, yeah, yeah whoever. You just get them on, and then we'll have my uncle pop in by phone. He's got a computer, but he won't do Skype. Um, old Vietnam helicopter pilot type guy doesn't like being on TV, but uh, we'll get him on and maybe I can even talk about it. Because again, he never wanted to come out and talk about it. He goes, ah, I'll never believe it. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Most of that stuff's not honey. Blah, 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 blah. You can look at it. You, you, can, you can look at it underneath a slide. We've looked at it. You'd see pollen and microscopic bug parts in there. You can taste it. You can boil it and tell what it is. You, you know, I can really tell Alex, it'll ruin. It'll ruin. They found honey in Egyptian caves, 3,000 years old in the tombs. You can still eat. Non-crystallized, Alex. Let me tell you, corn syrup will rot. I mean, just, but we'll see if we get my uncle on. He's one of the guys who woke me up to the New World Order. You know, I mean, I was already kind of waking up to it, but he was really deep into it. This will be a 10-hour show tonight, uh, but uh, there's that piece of news. Okay, let's uh, move on along here. Uh, poll, Ron Paul third party bid could transform 2012 election in a big scientific poll. 
uh, in a three-way race, he got 18% of the vote, with Obama getting 44, Romney getting 32. Now, here's the issue. In dead heats up against Romney, he beats him in polls, and he beats Obama in polls. This was just one poll by Real Clear Politics. Uh, Ross Perot in the similar polls had about six, seven, eight percent before he ran. Ron Paul would destroy them in the debates. Our article <clears throat> breaks it down, and it also talks about Jesse Ventura. I talked to Libertarian Party folks today. They, they're about to talk to him. It may have already happened. He's going to entertain running as the Libertarian uh, and, and going for that nomination. And then Ron Paul should know by March or April. Uh, if uh, he's going to end up being able to win the primaries, maybe able to as a Republican. If not, he comes over as the presidential candidate. Uh, Ventura's ready to go VP, and that is a power pack, star studded, pro freedom, anti New World Order group. And Jesse Ventura is, I'm really getting informed. I'm advising him. He's waking up to a lot of things and, and is, and is anti big government all the way, pro Second Amendment, anti war. These two are just a power pack team. And uh, that article is so important. Please get it out to everybody. Uh, poll, Ron Paul, third party bid could transform 2012 election. And I've, I've told Ron Paul on and off air. Um, by the way, I think Ron Paul's on next week, maybe even sooner, but <laughs> uh, with some a lot of important news. But uh, Ron Paul knows that he, this is his last hurrah. If he doesn't win this nomination because of vote rigging or stealing or whatever, or, the, or them trying to ignore him, he is number three undisputed right now. He's been winning the big straw polls lately in Illinois and came in second in the big one against uh, Mitt Romney. But they're still trying to ignore him because they're scared of him. Ron Paul runs third party if he doesn't win the nomination with the Republicans. And he'll have plenty of time to build that up and he'll at least be able to educate people, be in the debates, inject real issues. This will be worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of free advertising for liberty during that entire year-long election. Ron Paul has said he's leaving the House, and my intel is that's because even if he doesn't win the nomination, which he thinks he may and he could, for the Republicans, he isn't going to then say, now I'm a libertarian, and they're gonna say, well, you were elected a Republican. He's gonna say, doesn't matter, I'm already out of here anyways. And boom, it'll be just another attack on the globalist, another way to expose them. Very, very exciting. Look at that ticket right there. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, I'm not giving in to the New World Order. We got a good chance of beating these crooks. They're trying to clamp down and set up this big police state and all this garbage because they're scared to death, folks. And uh, I also like Ron Paul and Jesse Ventura being out there to fight the New World Order because then I'm not the only target. <laughs> I'm his greatest insurance policy, Alex. They would never kill him and make me president. No, they'd wait till you were both on one airplane and blow it up, but that'd be pretty damn obvious. All right, whatever. Been, we're going to continue to cover that. Again, Ron Paul, second only to Romney and Obama matchup. Congressman win O'Reilly straw poll, so O'Reilly disqualifies him. That's another big report. Where, where he, he, you've seen this in dozens of polls now. He'll win first, second, or third, and then they just don't even mention him in the poll. Remember when John Stewart did that compilation of videos of them doing that? Oh my God! Uh, so, uh, but, 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 but on his own show, on his own straw poll, he then didn't show the results. I mean, this is almost criminal. This amount of false advertising, disinformation and lying, certainly treasonous. I mean, Bill O'Reilly, take your VAT and sales taxes and, okay, I got a family audience. Mm, you, but you know, he got a lot worse after he got caught and settled with his uh, dirty talk. Um, and uh, so that's why he's basically over a barrel. He's a compromised man, ladies and gentlemen. These guys aren't. Uh, continuing here, scientific study confirms Ron Paul being given least face time in debates, even less than Santorum, Huntsman, and Ginrich. He's given less time in, uh, and less coverage in, in, in news stories than people that aren't even in the race, by the way, because they're scared of him. So we've got uh, that report. Romney gets 15.8 minutes in a debate, Perry 20, Bachman 12.5, Huntsman 11.3, Kane 8.1, Ginrich 11.1, Santorum, and it just goes on. They've got numbers. Uh, oh, oh, look at this graph. Give me a document cam shot. Uh, this is allotted time in the GOP debates. 
And uh, look right here. Ron Paul gets the least amount of time. That's a spectrum of three debates. They've got other graphs that show it. Look, Romney, the guy they want you to have. Their backup, Rick Perry, Bachman, Huntsman, Kane. That's how much they get in the debates. You see that? All right, continue. But they've hit the panic button with this uh, scandal with uh, Herman Cain, who is a, been caught. He has been caught lying, so I don't know what's true. But the fact that this one of these women works for Axelrod and the others have been caught. Others have been caught reporting uh, this stuff over and over again. Yeah, there's a poll, New York Times, where they don't even show Ron Paul, who's undisputed in second or third place. I mean, that's like, that's like watching an Indy 500 race and the, you don't mention the guy in second or third. I mean, it's like, the, it's like teams in the playoffs and you don't mention who's second or third. I mean, this is rigged BS. And you don't think they won't rig elections in different regions with the electronic machines? I'm sorry, do what? Oh, yes, they're predicting Huntsman. Yeah, he's, he's even in the campaign now. I mean, this is a guy who can't even get 1% of the vote, but that's who they want. Very bizarre. Laura Ingram was saying what? Why don't you just get on air, dude? They were praising Newt Gingrich, the guy that supports carbon taxes and world government. Whatever. We ought to set it up where you can actually get on air. I mean, we should do that because I've, t I've told the other crew to do that on the radio. They never do it. It's like I've asked for a lower third Infowars.com, not a bug, just Infowars.com for two years that I could just put on there instead of big giant lower thirds. You know what I mean? I'm not complaining, but we'll just do this on air. Like, I wanna, we're covering this here. This is, this, is, this is teleprompter free news. Do you like it? Okay, uh, let's go ahead now uh, and uh, get into this next report. We're almost done here and going to break and coming back with, uh, I didn't mention, Michael Bagnerick's coming up tonight. So that's going to be informative. Former Libertarian presidential nominee, 2004, good friend of mine. Uh, U.S. researchers and big pharma conducting human experiments in Africa. And, uh, I mean, I've seen this declassified hundreds of times, and it gets into reports where they've linked people getting HIV from the vaccines all I know is the BBC years ago had to admit that they checked medically a bunch of young women that had HIV. Some countries, half of them have it. And it turned out that they'd all been vaccinated. None of them had lost their virginity that they looked at. And they found, well, it must be dirty needles then. Yeah, right. Uh, so there is uh, that report. Uh, they use our troops as guinea pigs as well. Read the full report at Infowars.com or the People's Constitution has got links to it and to the ethical guidelines on human experimentation. Uh, our government under U.S. Code Title 50, Chapter, U.S. Code Title 50, Chapter 32, Section 1528, Paragraph B. That's hard to get from memory, but I gotta say it fast. U.S. Code Title 50, Chapter 32, Subsection 1528, Paragraph B. And they say all this experimentation is illegal unless it's for research, then it's all legal. DHS official. You would never know if new streetlights were spying on you. Uh, we have, uh, of course, a Fox News clip where they arrogantly uh, say that you would never know. You know, they say they're putting them in all over the country, but you'll never know which streetlight's doing it. Uh, they say it uh, with a lot of uh, arrogant uh, aplomb uh, at the end of the piece that you can read at Infowars.com. Oh, we have the clip? Sure, let's uh, play a short clip of the Fox News piece. Homeland Security here in Charlotte. He says if the city installed streetlights with surveillance abilities, you would never know. Isn't that nice? And again, they go through a whole piece about how great it is and every citizen loves it and everybody wants it. And it, it, it's freedom. Those that said this was coming were kooks. And now that it's here, you're a kook if you don't like it. Like Rush Today asked me yesterday, they said, are you schizophrenic? She said, what do the people think you're schizophrenic? I'm like, why? Because I just read to you the news about this. And it's like, mm -hmm. little, little, little green men going to get you? I don't know. I told people 10 years ago major banks were taking houses that people completely owned and that the bank didn't even have a deed for. And I showed the documents and I was crazy. Now it's all admitted. I mean, how much raping are you going to take from the crooks that run this government? How much? What's it going to take? Got to get 10 times worse? Because that's how it works. I'm going to show folks a graph of history, just a basic dead reckoning estimation from my deep research. Okay, 
This could be Germany. This could be the United States. This could be Rome. This could be China. Generally, the graph of tyranny starts like this. You have a culture of liberty, freedom. You know, there's always some corruption, but it, you know, it, it starts down here. And it could happen over 10 years, over five years, over 50. But the graph always goes in the general direction. For a long time, it grows very, 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 very slowly. But pretty soon it goes. Now, I want to tell you where we're at. This is why people are waking up. You notice in the time frame of, let's say, 50 years, a lot of times you'll have corrupt administrations that get away with more and more, and then a really bad person gets control, or a really bad political party, or a coup or something, and that's when it goes like this. But this is what's going on here. And we have reached about this point right now. And so in the time frame, just the last few years, you've seen admissions of world government, admissions of total surveillance. The government says they'll torture or kill U.S. citizens if they want. Yeah, there's going to be government checkpoints. You notice it takes 50 years to get to right here. And in the space of a couple years, it goes like this. And then you're just, I mean, you're a rocket at this point. <laughs> and, and, and it can go that fast or... You know, if, if you resist, it just kind of goes like that, but it's still just off the chart horrible. Or sometimes people just completely wake up and then, whoa, oh, sorry. But then the crooks are still in lower areas of government. They try to, uh, it's for your own good. Or, or, or they'll claim they're fighting this group of criminals, the new group that kicks them out, and they're kind of good at first. And then, oh, we're fighting those people. Uh, so, so once these in instruments of tyranny, once these engines of corruption have been built up, once they've got these factories of evil and big government, unless you get rid of the big government and the big system and punish all those involved or a large portion, they right away just repackage it and you're right back to the races. It's kind of like a person gets cancer and they fight it, but the chemotherapy and everything's so bad and whatever happens and you know, now their body's basically got the cancer cells in it from all the vaccines and the rest of it. And so, you know, you live 50 years and you get cancer, you beat it. But when you're 55, you get an even worse one, and you beat that and you die at 56. So, you know, it's kind of like, even if we wake up and fight this thing, you know, we've got cancer right now. You know, we've got cancers just all over us, and they're telling us it's just freedom. You know, we're, you know, we're all sick. Pus is dripping out of us. And, and they're like, look, this is freedom. I see old ladies wearing handbags like that. You know, just this is good. This is a good thing for you. And yes, that is diarrhea right there. <laughs> Where Glenn Beck has his chalkboards, I have a piece of paper. They say I ought to start eBaying these. We could probably fund the whole operation with Alex Jones' horrid doodles. Whatever, folks. If you want this for your kids, go take vaccines, drink fluoride water, eat radiated food, eat fake honey. Well, fine. Fine. I mean, don't believe Texas A&M University that 76 or 77, depending on the brand or, or where they shopped, is fake. Fine. It's all lies. Everything's great. Aspartame is good for you. Drink Diet Coke till the cows come home. And they admittedly gives you massive brain tumors, but don't listen to me, okay? Whatever. I'm a schizophrenic. Told you they were going to start having EAS, EAS alerts 12, 13 years ago. That, that, that the government would take over without the station in control. Then I told you five years ago, it was gonna be on phones and take and they'd have telescreens and shopping malls. I was reading government public documents. I mean, I told you the Marines were gonna start being at checkpoints, now they are. I was at the drills. I mean, I've been there, it's real, I shot video. I came back and showed it to you and you said I, I hired a $25 million crew. I mean, you understand, I haven't been exaggerating. It's worse than I can tell you. And it's, it, it's because people are in a trance. They can't believe this is really happening to them. You understand that? Okay, let's continue. Oh, yeah, speaking of me warning you, sure, uh, they're uh, talking now about how they've got microphones going up all over the country. But DHS says you won't know which poll has them recording it. By the way, they have your voice print if you've used Google Voice and all that. They admit that. That's sold to the government. So now they know who you are. And they want you to know now, little man. And they let you know, Bank of America is going to take houses they never owned. And the cops are going to come and take it. 
So they have to put that on the news because the cops are going, this house is paid for, we're taking it? They go, yeah, just uh, the Bank of America says so. All right, all right get, get your crap out of here on the street. So see, they got to throw all this in our face. So it's like, yeah, we're listening to you. We're face scanning you on the street. What you going to do about it? It's freedom. You're not with Al Qaeda, are you? So this is what they're doing. They got the cops so brainwashed, they find a pocket constitution. They flip out like they just found, um, again, 15 dead children in your backyard. Whatever. Look, it doesn't matter. All of you that are serving this evil and getting off on it, it's going to burn you worse than anybody else. <laughs> None of you are getting out of this. You understand that? None of you cowards that have gone along with this are getting out of this. You're not getting out of it. None of you are. Not the globalists that have created this. The pit they've dug for us, they're going to fall in it. The only way to go up against this is 110% in its face. Yeah, let's go to, I shot this in 98, put it in my film in 99, and I'm not going to show the whole piece where I talk about what they're going to do and everything, but it's in my film, Police Day 2000. And you can get it on DVD. I'm selling 18 of my films on DVD for $99.95. That's a $269 discount. If you want to support us at InfoWars.com. But uh, you don't have to go to and show it to them. They can find it if they want and support us. The point is, just, just, just go to the short clip from Police State 2000. It's not just armor that local law enforcement from state agencies to local police departments are getting. No, my friends. It's listening devices. Of course, the excuse is, is to find the location of gunshots, but the designers openly admit it can also be used to listen to your conversations and triangulate your position. Let's just consciously think about this for a second. Listening devices, and I almost forgot, in tandem with cameras, all federal funding. Repeat, all federal Armored personnel carriers, helicopters, foreign troops, practicing with local police, with our military. And in Austin, Texas, and many other cities I've visited. Uh, that's enough. I have. How the cameras point into the neighborhoods. Now they admit it. They'd say, this is non-law enforcement. You're a conspiracy theorist. Now it's all admitted. Just like Bush five years ago wouldn't admit they were spying on citizens. Now they just admit it. It's all illegal. Federal courts have ruled they can put GPS on your car without a warrant. And they're purchasing tens of thousands of them a year. And they're finding them all the time on school teachers' cars, you name it. But you videotape cops in public, they arrest you. I mean, this government is out of control. And they've convinced all these low-level minions that what they're doing is okay. I don't ever want to hear, if this continues, people criticize the German people or the Russian people for letting tyranny take over. This is the norm in the world. This is pathetic, but it is the norm. That, that people have tyrannies running them. It's just when Western countries set up tyrannies, it's always really nasty because then they start invading countries. And they don't just start dominating their own people. When a third world nation does it, we're just, oh, they're pathetic, look at that. But, 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 but now it's happening here. How much more will you put up with? Because I showed you the graph. Once we hit this spot, we're at the spot. That's why everybody's waking up. That's why everybody feels in their gut so much danger. I'm gonna show you again. Here's the graph. Okay, tyranny grows slowly over 50 years till you hit right here. We are right here. Now it's rocket time. Okay, and, and let me tell you, up this road, it just gets more and more insane. You think stuff's insane so far? This is just the system building up its weaponized grid for the people. The Pentagon admittedly designed with MIT these cameras, you notice that are all the rural areas, watching people, tracking you. They're the criminals. You got it. You got a criminal government. You got a bad government. All right. New streetlights have Homeland Security applications. There's that report. Uh, continuing here, big banks plead with customers not to move their money. I'm going to do a lot more on solutions. I, I've got to get to it. I, I believe the biggest solution is exposing the evil and discrediting these crooks and that it's an Ill illegitimate occupational government that's occupied us for the big banks. But the power of citizens saying no to $5 fees to use their own money that the banks are loaning out, by the way, that has made them back off on that front. They've backed off on Obama doing a 30-minute EAS takeover that we just covered. They back off all the time. Now, they always come back again. That's what it's about in life. Getting up every morning's a fight. Taking care of your kids every day's a fight. It's not easy. Surviving is winning. Used to getting enough food for your kids to eat and them not starving to death was winning. 
We think winning is watching a football game and being lazy. Winning is surviving and being wholesome and good. And because we forgot what winning was, now we're given all this crap, but all the real stuff is being stolen from us. The values, the liberty, the freedom, the rights, the honorableness that created the freedom, that created the liberty, that creates more of the milk and honey and the prosperity. As we have the liberty taken, the prosperity goes. When you fight for liberty, you get more liberty, more prosperity. When you give in to tyranny, you get less prosperity. You get degradation. You get humiliation because people that want to humiliate you, people who aren't ashamed to dominate innocence, people who like to be weird and scum-filled and are turned loose on you. Big banks plead with customers not to move their money. This report out of Washington blog links to all the mainstream articles where the banks are, are freaking out that people are pulling their money out. And that's how you show these criminals. They've already stolen tens of trillions of your money, taxpayer funded. But they're so leveraged that the billions being taken out of these uh, banks is literally threatening to bring them down. And, and again, they may just get a bigger bailout down the road. That's fine. We're identifying the enemy. I myself have kept small amounts of money for the business in some big banks because I got to pay folks that are contractors overseas. Regional banks can't do that. I've, I've, I've wanted to have it you know, in, in multiple, multiple uh, baskets in case we're, you know, we're mainly in local banks, but this is a big operation. And I've made the commitment, we're looking at it, to move the little bit of money we've got out of mega banks. Not even the big mega banks, but some of the smaller mega banks. All right, um, we're going to go ahead and go to break and come back with Michael Badnerick. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Don't forget, if you like real teleprompter, free, real information, the, the animating contest of liberty, this is the tip of the spear. A ragtag band, toe-to-toe -to -toe with the globalist. We've got free subscriptions, uh, trial for 15 days. It ends at the end of the month. PrisonPlanet.tv or InfoWarsNews.com. If you're watching out in cyberspace and want to get this every night when it first airs at 7, sometimes live, sometimes taped. Tonight's taped. Uh, right before, well, we're still recording, right before we're about to go live. Might as well go live. Anyways, we do that sometimes. Sometimes I... I, I I, I'm doing the show right up to seven, and then I come back on live, and then you see stuff recorded an hour before. How about I just do that right now, dude? How's that sound? D dude does just an incredible job. You don't want to know his nickname around here? I'm not going to do it. All right. Dude is suing Pittsburgh with Elmer Rhodes. Oh, my God. You're a piece of work. Uh, Waskily Wabbits. I love Rhodes. We're going to get him back on. All right, that's it. We'll be back after break uh, with uh, Michael Bagneric. Stay with us. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there. Wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. And we are back. It's InfoWars Nightly News, the second half of this evening's transmission against tyranny. I want to thank all the PrisonPlanet.tv subscribers. You are the folks making our films and the nightly news possible as we reach millions and millions of people a week. And of course, you also make possible for us to produce the news websites, InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. If you're watching this video out there on the thousands of video sharing sites like YouTube, uh, please spread the word about this information and also consider becoming a 15 cent a day subscriber at PrisonPlanet.tv to fund the real media defending liberty and resisting tyranny. Uh, but in the final equation, it's more important just to spread the word about these videos and this information because the White House is coming out saying they want to censor talk radio. They want to have an EAS alert system, as we covered earlier, breaking in over your computer over your phone with video and text messages, uh, telescreens going in the public places, forcing their message of fear and tyranny upon the public. And that only big sis and big government 
uh, will save you. We are in an incredible time as the sleeping giant that is free humanity awakens. No one can deny that. As Congress's approval rating slides to 9%, the system is going to attempt false flag stage terror attacks to get us on their side uh, and other uh, type activities as a pretext to bring this clamp down in. But as we documented, getting secret MIAC and Homeland Security reports from good law enforcement who are following their oath, none of it has to do with foreign, quote, Al-Qaeda Muslim threats. That's a red herring, an excuse. The entire system behind the scenes is for the American people, and now it's rolling out in the public. I wanted to get one of the most well-versed constitutional law scholars we interview, Michael Bagneric, on the show. You know, we've talked to a lot of constitutional lawyers, Stuart Rhodes, you name it. They're great folks and fighting hard. But Michael has, and I've known him for 14, 15 years since he moved to Austin. Uh, I, I've been doing this 17 years. He's been doing it almost as long. Uh, he, of course, was the Libertarian presidential nominee in 2004 and did a great job coming in fourth in that election right behind Ralph Nader. And uh, he's traveled the country teaching his constitutional law uh, to groups of citizens. But now he's shifting gears after recuperating from a heart attack that actually killed him. He, he was brought back by the defibrillators, thank God. Uh, he's now going to speak before state legislatures, and he's working with Sheriff Mack on a very exciting uh, operation to reach out to the sheriffs as well. And they're calling it Operation Domino Effect. We're going to talk about that before he leaves us. But first, uh, look, we're not happy about it, but we talked about it on the radio today. We've been proven right. Everything we warned of, Michael, is now unfolding. And uh, where is it going to go next if we don't turn it around? I mean, why, why could you and I and Ron Paul and others see this historically coming and see all the signs that were as clear as the nose on my face or your face? And, and, and now people are just now waking up to it. Uh, and, and is that why we're seeing the establishment freak out and come down to the population with both feet? It is. And really the psychological question is why people remain in denial for so long. Um, there were people on the Titanic who refused to believe the boat was sinking um, because it's just too horrific. And I think that when we tell people that the Federal Reserve is counterfeiting our money and We've got FEMA concentration camps. I think people just get overwhelmed by the concept and they don't want to believe it. Um, but they are believing it now. And as we said in uh, an earlier program today, the government is so out of control that it's hard not to believe it. And we've got all these uh, patriot groups out there. You can't throw a stick without hitting a protest rally. Things are, are changing rapidly. And we are hopefully teaching people the fundamentals, the philosophy that underscores the Constitution so that they can understand why individual rights and private property are almost the same thing. Well, that's right. Humanity has been through this over and over again, and that's why many historians and philosophers and teachers have said those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it. Uh, people been through this over and over again. They went through 30, 40 years of it under British tyranny before they finally stood up and became the model of liberty worldwide. Now, that greatest model, I'm getting chills right now, is under assault, but that's because it's the antidote, and you're out there trying to administer the antidote. Uh, as a constitutional scholar, we, uh, I want your take on this, because now we hear it's a privilege to own a gun, a privilege to drive a car, even though we have all the cases saying it's not. Uh, it's a privilege to fly. It's a privilege of this and that. And now they're saying it's a uh, privilege to, uh, you know, have the TSA on the highway sticking their hands down your pants. Well, then if it was something that was lawful, why didn't it happen before in this country? And why was it synonymous with authoritarian states? So as the TSA, with local police under their control, sure, it's 10th Amendment violators, sure, it's 4th Amendment, but specifically for citizens now driving up, to hundreds of officers, including Army, wanting to search their vehicles and their person. What do you do at that point, A, and B, as a scholar, explain to people who are brainwashed, police and others that have been told that, it, that they're allowed to do this, why they're wrong? Well, what we have to do is be brave enough to resist. No, you may not search my car, and I'm not sure how dangerous that'll be, but we all need to insist that they do not search our car. The legal ramifications of that is the Fourth Amendment. They have to have probable cause. 
They can't just come into your home and search just because they want to. They have to have probable cause, which means some physical evidence that leads to the probability of other evidence. That's why when a police officer stops you alongside the road, they always ask for permission to uh, search your car because they know they don't have the authority to do that. Um, unfortunately, most of us are intimidated. The police officers are tall, they're armed, and we just give in so that we can get this whole mess over with. Um, the TSA, they are searching everybody that goes through. There is no uh, probable cause that you have committed a crime, and it's only because everybody goes along with it. It's just kind of, that's the way we've always done it, attitude that allows them to get away with it. And we need to have a lot more people. And, and you can search the Internet. There are already cases where people refuse to do the body scan. They refuse to go through the scanner. Um, I know of at least one lady that, you know, basically stripped down into her uh, uh, underwear. And, um, you know, so people are protesting. And Oh, well, I've seen it myself. They have National Opt-Out Day last uh, year. And it ended up for two weeks, they just turned the scanners off for longer and did none of it. They didn't want to give us a chance to protest and say no. But think about the, the legal idea that everyone's guilty until proven innocent and the government's got to stop any potential crime before it starts. At first, it's airports, then it's malls and it's highways. And they've said, yes, we're going to be everywhere. I mean, I mean it, it, it is so amazing. So... Explain to folks the Fourth Amendment. You know, it's, it's, it's houses, persons, papers, effects. I mean, it's your person. It's your body. What do you do when the state police pull you over and don't even ask? Grab your cell phone, plug it into a system to grab the whole contents. What do you do when you find that tens of thousands of Americans without warrants have GPS stuck on it and federal courts are ruling they can do that? I mean, this is a full-on assault uh, on the Fourth Amendment, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And what your listeners need to know fundamentally is that individuals have rights. We are granted those rights by God, and those rights are unalienable. When we created the state governments and the federal government, we granted the government's privileges. And we can take those privileges away anytime we're brave enough to do, the, do so. The Declaration of Independence says that we can alter or abolish the government if it's in violation of our rights. So we have absolute total authority. We are the source of all political power in the United States if we are brave enough to exercise that power. So we have rights, the government has privileges, the government has no authority to change one of our privileges, our rights into a privilege. Um, I ask police officers if they have a, a church permit, and they look at me real funny, and I ask them if they've ever filled out a government form that allows them to exercise their religion. And they point out that the government has no authority to require a permit for the exercise of a right. And then I ask them to explain how the Second Amendment is any different. If you don't need a church permit, why do you think that I need a concealed carry? Well, sure. And, and you know, I look at concealed carry two ways. Uh, it, it turns a right into a privilege, but then the cops leave you alone and it makes crime go down. But you're right, the Second Amendment is the concealed carry, the, the Vermont-style concealed carry, and that's, that more and more is what's coming in. And one of the most beautiful protests I've seen is all over the country, people wearing firearms on their side at demonstrations and in public. And the national media just two years ago was, this is impossible. But, but, but now the police are more and more behaving themselves. But we've had to do this because I saw cases every week in the news where somebody would be putting their gun in the back of their car to go deer hunting or the shooting range and neighbors would call the cops on them. Even in rural areas, having a gun in your, um, you know, your pickup truck uh, there in a gun rack, you'd get pulled over. They were creating a culture where you don't have that in public or we're going to harass you. We've thrown it back in their face and now it's really freaking the system out because they base all these cop show dramas, if you've noticed, Michael, uh, in New York. So they see cop shows where we pulled him over, he's got a gun, you're going to jail for this. And then people, I talked to people in Texas and I was in Nevada as some of the you know most pro Second Amendment laws in the country, and they said, "Yeah, I sure wish I could have a gun." And I said, "Do you have a criminal record?" And they said, "No," uh, because I was with Jesse Ventura at a shooting range for a video shoot, 
and I was talking to folks that were in Las Vegas but lived there who were local crew, and they, one of them was a mother, and she didn't know she could have a gun, period, because she watches TV. So, so there's this incredible ignorance. What do you think of this revolution of people wearing guns openly to, to, to show the public, the police, and everybody else, this is my right? I mean, I, I think this is one of the most powerful models we've seen. I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I wish it had happened a long time ago. And in addition to classes on the Constitution, I have personally offered a couple of gun classes. Uh, I was in Kokomo, Indiana uh, about five weeks ago and uh, had eight or nine people out. And Alex, I was really impressed. After just a couple hours, all of these people were, were hitting the target. They had real gun control. They were, uh, they were putting in nice, nice little group, and, and I am happy to offer that service to anybody who wants to learn how to shoot. Uh, you know, just give me a call. I'm, I am doing, I'm willing to do anything I can to promote liberty. Well, that's what I love. You don't just go on national TV or be a, you know, the libertarian nominee. You've always loved going out and even teaching small groups of people because we talked about it today. You understand the power is in every individual you wake up, every individual you empower to be a leader. That's where the real strength is. Absolutely. We are all supposed to be individuals. We all have individual rights, which is the only kind of rights that exist. Um, your listeners may be a little surprised. I hate the phrase constitutional rights, because when you say that over and over again, it sounds as if the Constitution gives you your rights. And if that's true, then the Constitution can take those rights away. The Constitution only enumerates your rights. It just lists them on paper. But if we burn the Constitution and shred the Bill of Rights, it's certainly not going to get me to shut up. They're certainly not going to get me to turn in my guns just because they got rid of a piece of paper. Exactly. My I want to say something to atheists out there. Because I always get their emails when I talk about God-given rights, or you talked about it on the radio today. They're not getting it. Even if you're an atheist, agnostic, whatever it is, something is going to claim it has the right of the sovereign to issue things, okay, from its throne. And so by saying, I as an individual have galactic rights, universal rights, uh, organic rights, that's another way of saying God-given, saying I innately, like they didn't have it written down as a law 200 years ago that a black person was a human and had a right to grab the, 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 the whip away of the, of the slave master and beat him over the head with it, but he inherently had that God-given right to not be a slave. Uh, Roman emperors, you know, could slit people's throats for fun if they wanted to. I believe under God-given rights, if, if the Roman emperor wasn't defending themselves and doing that to an innocent, the person had a right to kill the Roman emperor. I mean, it's very simple. If government is God, then it can do whatever it wants. And it more and more is saying, we can kill U.S. citizens without a trial. We can bomb people in countries with drones and don't even know who they are. We can be above the law. We can violate your rights. We can spy on you. I want you to speak to God-given rights and explain that to the atheist out there, that you just made the government God when you don't you know, say, well, I don't want God-given. Explain that to them. And then I want you to speak on... Well, I mean, I'll bring it up again because there's so many points, but they're, they're banning cash and secondhand sales in Louisiana. Louisiana is also in other states saying cops can search your car without a warrant now on a hunch. That's not probable cause. Uh, you know, I magically think, as the psychic said, uh, I mean, we're really seeing a full out conscious assault. We're seeing Time Magazine Newsweek come out and demonize uh, you know, all of our basic liberties, saying the Constitution's bad. Talk about that. I, in my class, I always ask if Chinese people have a right to life. And the answer is, of, of course they do. I ask, do they have a constitution? Do they have a bill of rights? Do they have a government that respects their right to life? And the answer to all of that is no. We do have a constitution. We do have a bill of rights. But we don't have a government that respects our rights. And... Whether you believe in God or not, you as an individual have a responsibility to survive. That is hardwired into your DNA. And if you do believe in God, and you believe that God gave you this body, then, I mean, you have even a greater responsibility to make sure that nobody damages or kills your body. Only God can, you know, can take that power. 
And so, you know, even, you know, even uh, Christians, I ask them, does the Constitution protect atheists? I mean, even if they don't believe in God, they still have that right to life. And if God has given us the right to freedom to choose and, and free will, then we should be as magnanimous. And, you know, if a person doesn't believe in God, you know, that's going to be handled someplace else at another time. It's not our issue. But everybody understands uh, self-defense. And and that's that's kind of one of the the tangible ways to understand your rights. Sure. Uh, I, I mentioned this today with you, but I'm going to put it on screen. Here's the BBC. But when I saw this two weeks ago, linked at DrudgeReport.com, we then put it on Infowars.com. But I thought, well, that's just the British view. Then I went and found articles in the city where this happened. I was in what Philadelphia. And then I went and saw other articles where they agreed, they said the, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence particularly, is bad. There's the BBC headline, is the U.S. Declaration of Independence illegal? And it says to claim that individuals have an inherent right to basic liberties that are in this document is, is bad. And the, and the article goes on with the pro and con, but the, you know, the con is basically the view picked up by government today and then our own papers kind of externalize what's already being taught to police on videos. You know, I talked to you today about Road to Tyranny, where it actually has the state police from their own squad car video at a checkpoint. They go, we're going to search your car. And she goes, no, uh, Fourth Amendment. This is in Virginia in, in 2000. And they say, get out. And they find a pocket constitution, and they start hyperventilating. And, 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 and you think it's like a, a skit or something of like an absurdist joke, but it's not. Uh, I mean, they've actually... Well, it's like these guys might as well be from Mars or something. Uh, I mean, the, so why do you think Time Magazine, Newsweek, I mean, I can show those those two sh actually saying the reason things aren't good is the Constitution. In fact, they're saying get rid of this and government will make everything okay. But it's since we started getting rid of it, that everything's going to hell in a handbasket. Well, I think it was uh, Goebbels who worked for Hitler that said if you tell a lie often enough, People will eventually believe it. This is a huge propaganda campaign. Um, I was accosted by a Texas police officer, and I asked if he had taken an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. He said, well, the, the Texas Constitution. And so I accused him of impersonating an officer. And he finally said, well, yes, I guess the Constitution was in there someplace. I said, so then you can tell me how many articles are in the Constitution, right? And... In three minutes, I had him going from, you know, hard guy cop, you know, trying to intimidate me to rocking back on his heels. You know, your your audience needs to know the Constitution. They need to have the courage to defend their ideas using the Constitution. Because exactly, because that's my point. And I want you to continue. Behind the scenes, there's a total war against it. Now it's out in the open. And I, I, in fact, I had a video today I never got to. Guys, if you can cue it up, it's at Infowars.com. The headline was, um, it was a Steve Watson article. And if you just type into the search engine, um, and, we'll, and we'll play it so, so, so Mike can hear it if we have time. What was the exact headline? I meant to get to it tonight. The good part about it, uh, this being my own show is I can... I can last minute, you know, come up with something. It's not all scripted. Uh, the headline was um, Penal Code Trump's First Amendment. And they're just a little demonstration at a park. And the cops come up and say, you got to leave. And they go, but it's our First Amendment, right to assemble and all this. And the cop says, that doesn't matter, penal code. Uh, and, of course, they can just make that up out of anything or interpret it however they want. Marbury versus Madison. We understand it's a fraud. But, but, but for those that don't know, this is America. These people claim they love America all day. And we're doing this because America's the good guys. America's been different and been the example of the world because of the Declaration of Independence, Constitution, Bill of Rights. Because it did enumerate. And then the establishment always attacks the founders as, as not being perfect. No, but they gave the greatest expression of liberty that far into history. And so now we've gone back before that to tyranny. So so you're pointing out they're assaulting it. That's right. We've got to defend it. I mean, they wouldn't be assaulting it and trying to get cops hyped up to hate it. So many cops and judges now say, I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. You know, I mean, th this is treason, isn't it? This is treachery. Uh, Michael. 
absolutely it is treason. And again, people get really freaked out when you start to talk like that, but it is treason. These people are violating the Constitution, they are violating our individual rights, and they are doing it because, for the most part, Americans on whole allow them to get away with it. I don't know if you're aware that about five months ago, the Indiana Supreme Court decided that if the police are kicking down your door at 2 a.m. without a warrant committing a crime, you still do not have the authority to defend yourself against the police, apparently because Indiana state policy trumps your right to life. And, you know, I, I loaded another magazine. Anybody comes through my front door at 2 o'clock in the morning is never going home again. Well, the system's going to have a problem if they continue to push this. Michael Bagnerick, in closing, I want to give you the floor for four or five minutes here because I know you can talk for 10 hours like I can. In fact, it doesn't even do you justice just to have you here and have me ask my babbling questions. But tell us about your Operation uh, Domino or Domino Effect and, and, and then tell us the two possible futures, where this is going if we let the tyrants win where we're going if we stand up. You've got the floor, four or five minutes. Break it down for us. Well, one of the projects that we have is uh, freeamericanow.org. It's a, an organization that is there to support all of the liberty organizations that are already in existence. Our goal is to provide education and media and, and support for all the people who are out there on the front line. Ammo. Uh, we're not trying to, to take over or tell you how to do your job. We just want to make you more effective at what you are already doing. Now, one of the projects that that group is uh, supporting is Sheriff Mack's project called the County Sheriff Project. Sheriff Mack wants to bring 200 sheriffs to Las Vegas and teach them about the oath of office uh, Sheriff Mack has invited me to come and uh, talk to them about the Bill of Rights. The goal is to have them sign a letter to Washington, D.C., explaining the flow of political power, telling them that the federal government is not welcome in those 200 counties. I'm doing a parallel project for myself that I call Domino Effect. I was invited to teach my Constitution class on the floor of the Oklahoma State House. That will be January 14th. And go to my website, constitutionpreservation.org. This is going to be a historic event, and I decided that if I can do it in Oklahoma, I should be able to do it in most of the other 49 states. And if we can get the county sheriffs trained and the state legislatures trained, we'll be well on our way to restoring uh, liberty. And I'm also going to Colorado next week. I've been invited to teach, my, I teach a two-hour se uh, session uh, on the Bill of Rights several times uh, as part of this young lady's uh, congressional campaign. You can find out about that at my website. People are talking about the Constitution. They are beginning to understand these principles. Alex, we are turning the tide. Uh, you and I have been working for a long time, but things are starting to go the other way. We are very close to the tipping point if we haven't already crossed it. And as more and more people gather forces with us, we will restore liberty. If I'm wrong, and if the American people continue to sit down and watch Survivor and Dancing with the Stars, and they do not stand up to the tyranny which is ever present all around us, then, you know, the, the Nazi Holocaust of the 1940s would have been just a starting point. And the same thing will happen here in the United States. I don't know which group of people they will decide is, you know, needs to go first, but eventually the, the people who have the power will dominate if the American people don't stand up and defend their life, liberty, and property. So I am always available to answer questions. Um, please go to my website, send me an email, and, and Alex, I want to come in. You, you've been doing this for longer than anybody I can think of, and you are one of the most effective people that I know of to get the truth out there. And so thank you for all that you do for Liberty. Well, Michael, thank you. Uh, look, uh, I don't have any future if we don't beat these people. I've studied history. And this is a very virulent form of tyranny where it's a conscious scientific tyranny, and it's so nasty. 
And, you know, I've, I've had to tell my wife, you know, we're staying here. There's really nowhere to run anyways. And I've had, because she's smart, and a woman wants to protect her kids. I mean, I have to sit there and tell my wife, uh, we're not evacuating. Uh, and a lot of other prominent people are having that discussion. This isn't a game. It isn't hyperbole. Uh, this is hardcore tyranny. And you talk about the states being the answer, local, take back a control. That's why they got rid of the senators being elected by the uh, state reps. It was to get rid of state power, as you know. That's why they've got federal police uh, building the threat fusion centers, federalizing police. Now federal police setting up checkpoints. I mean, just on the 10th Amendment violation, can you just spend a minute on that? I mean, to have the feds now, it, not just violating the Fourth Amendment, but under the 10th, where are the legislatures? I mean, this is like Reconstruction or something that Lincoln wasn't even for. Uh, you know, and then they killed him and uh, uh, Stanton and, and uh, Ulysses S. Grant took over. Uh, and, but known as martial law worldwide, taught in the Pentagon as, as a horrible thing that they could never do. You know, again, uh, Posse Comitatus, 1878. I mean, we're seeing basically Homeland Security Reconstruction occupying the U.S. I mean, that's what this is for folks that don't know what it is. They haven't read the John Warner Defense Authorization Act of 2007, said that's what they were going to do. I mean, this is so chilling, Michael. It is. It's absolutely frightening if you, you realize the extent of it. We, the people, invented the state government. In 1789, we ratified the Constitution. The state governments created the federal government. So the federal government is supposed to be small and limited and and the least... We, our ancestors, created this and said we're the boss, can change it any time we want. Of course, the criminals are then demonizing that deed or birthright. Yeah, when the federal government comes in, they act like we're the government, we're here to help. And um, Richard Mack is famous for taking his uh, Brady Bill uh, challenge all the way to the Supreme Court and winning. And one of the important fundamentals of Richard Mack's uh, winning lawsuit is it states explicitly that the federal government has no power over the states. So the state government is supposed to protect us from the federal government. The state government has the authority to throw the federal government out. All we need is for our state governments to, well, grow a pair and do that. They've had 37 states make 10th Amendment resolutions, which, okay, so you wrote down in a piece of paper that this is the 10th Amendment. Okay, I will be impressed when a state government finally throws the federal government out. When you take action on that resolution, then I will be impressed. But in the meantime, we the people have to stand up. We the people need to take back our city governments, county governments, state governments, and, and eventually the federal government will fall back into its minuscule position, which is where it's supposed to be. Sure, but, but the system... The system knows what it's doing. It knows it's setting a precedent. It's basically squatting in the state. Just 20 years ago, the feds had to get permission to even come into a county, unless it was bank robbery or counterfeiting or something like that. Now they're trying to pass a bullying bill to federally come in and brainwash kids on a bunch of political stuff at the local level. I mean, I mean, it's literally like the Moscow Central Communist Committee sending down its, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, it's got to be reversed. It's out of control. A a absolutely. I, there are so many laws out there. As you mentioned, Louisiana says you're not allowed to use cash, which, which I mean, I can't even believe they said that. Wisconsin has said that you don't really own your cow and you do not have a right to drink milk from a cow that you own. I can't believe that anybody will say that out loud. And, and the feds so, say it's not the law, but it's our position. You shouldn't drink raw milk. I, I drink raw milk every chance I get. I just had uh, some. I had some this morning. Nobody, nobody is going to tell me what I can or can't not drink. This is ridiculous. I'm a grown man. Even my parents don't tell me what to do. But you have to understand: when a thief comes into your house, that thief is tiptoeing in the other room, not make any sound, because that thief knows that what he is doing is wrong. He knows and he doesn't want to get caught. That's why the government does all of this stuff with fraud and trickery, and they try to slip all this stuff in. They're in Texas. Uh, you know, the governor tried to slip the Trans-Texas Corridor past us, and we found out about it almost at the last moment. 
And hey, look, Obama, yeah, and we beat it. Obama tried to put a Christmas tree tax in, and and that got beat. Tried to sneak through. Uh, uh, look at look at. Look at all the things constantly. They were going to have the emergency alert system take over today and have a 30-minute Obama speech. But everybody got mad, so it was only a 30-second takeover. So, I mean, right there, Michael Bagneric, incredible talking to you. Uh, finish your point, and then we'll let you go about the, uh, about the Trans-Texas Corridor. A, a Christmas tree tax? I hadn't heard that. It just gets crazier. <laughs> I mean, Alex, you almost have to laugh. I do. You have to laugh. Otherwise, you start to cry. And, and it's that type of nonsense that are waking people up to the, all this insanity. It makes Alice's Wonderland seem like a rational place to live. No, that's what I mean. I mean, I've got that video in Road to Tyranny where they find a constitution and act like they found a dead baby or something. I mean, they're, oh, oh, and I'm watching the squad car video. I'm like, is this a joke? And I keep waiting for it to be a joke. It's never a joke. They take her to jail. I mean, these people are like, Need to be in lunatic asylums. <laughs> I mean, they swear an oath to it. This is America, you dumb bastard. I am continuing to travel. Again, I will be in Colorado. Uh, you can go to my website, to the projects page, and find my schedule. You can also go to casita2012.com. And uh, I, anybody that wants me to come to your town to teach my class or to give a gun class, please feel free to contact me. I'm willing to do anything that I can. Um, if Alex Jones can work 18 hours a day, so can I. Well, Michael, you're there up there working hard already, but you're saying uh, you, you, you're waiting to be dispatched wherever, so folks need to need to call you to their realm of the uh, world so they can, uh, uh, here's money, really lay it out. Lay out the thing the vampires are so scared of. That's the Bill of Rights, Constitution, Declaration of Independence, that is simply a signpost pointed towards our unalienable, unalienable rights uh, that as as... Number nine in the Bill of Rights states, hey, there's a lot more rights here that aren't listed. This is just enumerating some of the basic ones that will not be infringed. God bless you. It was good talking to you. Thank you, Alex. It's a pleasure as always. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was an extended interview with Michael Bagneric. Uh, I just, th there's no way when we're having these discussions uh, to uh, stop. Uh, I could go for hours with him. The system doesn't want you to see this. It's openly trying to censor this information more and more. This is poison to the globalist. And it's a real pleasure to risk my life to fight these tyrants. I'm more than happy to do it. My name, my treasure, whatever. Just defeat them. People are finally waking up. Yeah, I talked today in closing about being on Russia Today yesterday, and I was mentioning things that are all in the news. You know, I can't use cash, uh, GPS without warrants, uh, Homeland Security checkpoints. And the woman says, basically, are you schizophrenic? <laughs> And I'm like, uh, no, this is all admitted, but that's people hearing this and not being able to deal with it. What's really scary is that there are some people now who admit this is all happening and say, well, that's fine, that's fine. But those are little bought and paid for toadies. All the numbers, all the polls show about 80% of people want basic liberty and are somewhat awake. About 30% of that total are really awake and angry. We just got to educate two or three more people individually. We'll have the majority. It's like moose hunting. Not everybody gets one up in Michigan because uh, there's not many moose. And it's the same thing with defeating the New World Order politically and intellectually. If you just go out and wake up a few people, that's everybody. Then we just take action. It doesn't matter how much election fraud there is or how many Homeland Security people because the entire family of that cop, the entire family of that bureaucrat is going to be awake. Okay? And there's all sorts of things we can do to bring this system down. All right, that's it. I'm done ranting. Great job to the crew. Great job to you out there that make these transmissions possible. 15-day free trial is going to end at the end of the month. That special is going to end. 15-day free trial for a yearly membership or a monthly membership, whatever. It's 15 cents a day if you sign up normally. It supports us, funds this operation. The Money Bomb was a success. We're going to hire two or three more reporters. We're going to hire more video editors and more people to, to uh, run the board in there and the cameras so we can get even more done and add more shows here. <laughs> I, I tell you, it's exciting. It's exciting. You know what, Bagneric's still sitting there politely so I can say bye to him. Bagneric, maybe we need to get you to move down here to Austin and uh, be a reporter here. Everything about that? I would love to. I would love to. I'm currently helping take care of my parents. 
But, uh, yeah, I will be back in Texas eventually. You can count on that. Oh, man, well, taking care of your folks is super important. But well, I, I, you know, in between travel and the country, who knows? You'll be our roving reporter. We've got a lot of stuff coming up, and it's all because of you supporting us voluntarily voting with those fellow reserve notes. All right, that's it. That's it for InfoWars Nightly News. Spread this video. Spread this. By the way, I want to add an audio feed because a lot of folks tell me their computers won't play videos or they want to air this stuff on the radio or they want to get it immediately or can we turn these into audio files soon and start having that posted as well? Genius, genius. All right, brainstorming here on air. We still haven't brainstormed how to do this microphone where it doesn't pop out. I'm going to have to put it into, uh, put it up my shirt. All right, no, teleprompter free news, folks. You're going to get this sometimes. All right, I might go for five hours here. All right, we're out of here. Uh, see you back uh, tomorrow, 7 o'clock Central, God willing.